that in mind, let's move on to the equivalent statements. So one is not Q, then not P. This is the first equivalent statement. And this is called the contrapositive. And this is really, really important. This is saying that if Q doesn't happen, then P won't happen. And this is actually this is actually the same statement. This is logically equivalent to P then Q. The way we would express this uh, logically is we would say P then Q if and only if not Q then not P. And if we think about this, it, it makes sense because P then Q, P is sufficient for Q, is saying that if P happens, Q will happen. What the second one, the contrapositive, is saying is that if Q doesn't happen, P didn't happen. Right? If not Q, then not P. And that, that follows from this because if what well, this is telling you that P is sufficient for Q, whenever P happens, Q will happen. So if Q didn't happen, P can't have happened. Right? If Q did not happen, this is not Q, then P can't have happened. And the original statement is actually the contrapositive of the contrapositive. If you note that Q is not not Q, right? We have this double negation thing. And so in order to check this, I encourage everyone to draw the truth tables. Right, I have, we have the truth table for P then Q already drawn, uh, actually draw the truth table for negative, for not P, that's the, the math in me talking, not, uh, not Q, then not P. Actually draw the truth table, see that they're equivalent, because again, the truth tables are, are they, that is the gold standard, that is straight from the horse's mouth. We know they are, as long as we didn't screw something up, we know they're equivalent. Um, this is really, really important in, in doing proofs, right? Proof by contrapositive is one of the main, the main proof techniques. You have, you have uh, direct proofs, um, you have proof by contradiction, you have induction, you have uh, tons of other proof types. Uh, co contrapositive is one of the main ones. And so this is when, if they tell you, if they tell you prove, um, if some statement, we call it statement one, then statement two. So I don't know uh, if a number is, if a number is even, then it's not prime or something. That's a silly one. Uh, so if it's, if it's even and it's not two, then it's not prime. You could prove that by saying, okay, well, suppose it's prime. Let me prove that it's it's not even or uh, or it's two, something like this. Um, the point is that if you, that that's a silly example because I'm making it up, but the point is that if they give you a statement and they say, prove that this statement implies that statement and you don't get anywhere, you're trying this and you can't do anything. Well, try instead, assuming that say, we say, suppose statement two, is false. So not statement two. And then you do some stuff and wind up with not statement one. That's that's equivalent, right? By contrapositive, you have proved the first implication. You've proved that if statement one, then statement two. By assuming that statement two is not true and proving that means that statement one is not true. So this is a really, really important thing to understand, and you're going to use it again and again when you do proofs. Um, and again, the tip off that you should be doing this is if you're if you're starting with uh, what they gave you and saying, I want to prove this implies that, and you can't go anywhere, say, well, what if I just negate this? What if I say this is not true? Then what do I have to work with? That's actually one of the big advantages of proof by contradiction as well, is that if they say prove something, they want to give you a direct proof. And you you have no you don't know where to start you can't get going well let's say suppose not suppose the thing is not true that gives you something to work with and then you you uh, go to a contradiction and then that means that that it's impossible for it to not be true and your original statement is is true we'll talk about that in another another video but I want to I want to just make a quick note as I'm saying this that when I say I say that the way I'm going to do it is say suppose not uh, statement one state and one this is the sort of math way of doing this. If you're if you're a pure math person, you're used to writing things like this, um, because we tend not to worry so much about a formal method of proving, a formal sort of format that the proofs have to come in. If the logic is solid, then we're generally okay with it. So we sort of we sort of very casually say, suppose this one is is not true. Your prof may very 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 well want you to do something like, not in all capitals, statement one, 
or say assume something like this. There's there's probably some format that they um, are more sort of stringent about in computer science courses, especially they tend to, to to want the same sort of proof style every time. I don't I don't really know why. Um, as a math person, it, it's always sort of confused me. But I I suppose it's probably has something to do with that people who teach these courses are are programmers. I mean, they're used to everything being in a very sort of formal, structured way where, you know, you, you write in the in the code language the same statement formats every single time. Maybe they prefer that. Maybe that has some advantages for computer science people. So um, very often, very often I'll be doing proofs and I'll, I'll be reasoning in a way that is is sort of casual and uh, the kind of way that, that math people would do it. Um, and I don't want you to take that to mean that you can do that exact same thing on your tests and assignments. Whatever your professor wants to do, do it that way. Uh, we're just sort of paying attention to the logic and the underlying the underlying math here. Okay. Statement number or equivalent statement number two, and this one is also very important. Uh, this is it's equivalent to not p and not q. Not p and not q. And this comes this comes directly from this line of the truth table. We are saying that p then q is false if p is true so we have p and q is false so we have not q right p and not q is what's going on here p is true q is false so not q is true and we're saying that that will make the the conditional statement false so the conditional statement p then q is logically equivalent to not p and not q and this again this means this means equivalent so they're satisfied under the same truth conditions, the same truth assignments, true or false to P and Q will make each one of these, they will be, they will be true at the same time, right? When, when P is true and Q is true or P is false, and they will both be, they will both be true exactly when, exactly when uh, P is true and Q is false. And so again, the exercise is make the, make the truth tables for these. So convince yourself that that is true. P then Q is equivalent to not both P and not Q. And this is really, really, really important and useful, especially in computer science, because very often they will want you to express a, lo a, uh, a statement, a logical statement, without any conditionals or biconditionals. And so what this is saying is that if they, and they ask you for only, only using negations, conjunctions, uh, which is an and, or disjunctions, which is an or. And if you want to do this, this is telling you that that I can take anywhere I see a statement like P then Q, I can replace it with not P and not Q. Even, and this is a crucial thing, even if it's a compound statement, even if it's a more complicated statement, if this was P and Q, then not uh, P if and only if uh, not Q, say. Let's 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 not do any if and only ifs just yet. Let's say p then not q, something like this. I could replace this stage one. I would say this is not but this is not both p and q, and not what's the second one? So this is like the this is my antecedent here. It's my antecedent, and then my what is my consequent? It's this it's this whole negated statement. So not P and Q and not, not P, then not Q. And then you could do the same thing with this, right? This is another, making sure that our brackets are in the, in the right place. This is another conditional statement here that you can then replace. And I'll leave that as an exercise. Can you, can you find the, the statement involving only nots and ands? That will that will give you this equivalently, and then you'll have switched completely from conditionals to nots and ands. In another video, we'll see how to switch from biconditionals because a biconditional is just two conditionals. We can go to just nots and ands and ors. Like I say, that is a big thing in computer science.